Sutra. Some people are deluded and some are wise. The deluded are small people and the wise are great people. The deluded question the wise and the wise that teach Dharma to the deluded. When the deluded people suddenly awaken and understand, their minds open to enlightenment and they are no longer different from the wise. Good knowing advisors, unenlightened, the Buddha is a living being. At the time of a single enlightened thought, the living being is a Buddha. Therefore, you should know that the 10,000 dharmas exist totally within your own mind. Why don't you, from within your own mind, suddenly see the true suchness of your original nature? The Bodhisattva Srila Sutra says, Our fundamental self-nature is clear and pure. If we recognize our own mind, and see the nature, we shall all perfect the Buddha way. The Vimalakati Nidesha Sutra says, Just then, suddenly, we gain your original mind. Commentary If in the very shortest space of time, the, the space of a thought, you suddenly understand, you wake up and become a Buddha. Confused, you are a living being. Enlightened, you are a Buddha. One confused thought, you are a living being. Thought after thought confused, thought after thought, a living being. One enlightened thought, you are a Buddha. Thought after thought enlightened, thought after thought, a Buddha. What does it mean to be enlightened? Ask yourself, ultimately, what advantage do emotion and desire have? Emotion and desire harm your body. That is a serious problem. They rob you of your life. They make you stupid. If in thought after th thought you have desire, then thought after thought you are deluded. It is said, karma ended, emotion ended, is the true Buddha. Karma heavy, emotion turbid, is the living being. Enlightenment is here. Put down defied thoughts and pick up the pure. What are defied thoughts? Thoughts of desire are defied thoughts. I will make it even clearer. Thoughts of sexual desire are defied thoughts. You should clearly recognize your thoughts of sexual desire. Should you give way to sexual desire with your body, then the action of your body, your body karma, is impure. If you talk about sex, the action of your mouth is impure. If you constantly think about sex, your mind karma is impure. However, if you are without offense in body, mouth, and mind, you are not far from Buddhahood. Most people turn their backs on enlightenment and unite themselves with the dust of external objects and states. Falling into states of emotion and desire, they become defied. Leaving emotion and desire behind and turning your back on the dust, you are united with enlightenment. You are clear and pure and can realize Buddhahood. However, as long as you have the slightest trace of defilement, you cannot realize Buddhahood. You remain a living being. One confused thought makes you a living being for the space for the space of that thought. If every thought is confused, you are continually a living being. One enlightened thought makes you a Buddha for the space of that thought. If every thought is enlightened, you are always a Buddha. Do you see it is very simple? Still you need the help of a good knowing advisor who will teach you that in order to be clear and pure, it is of the utmost importance to be unselfish, not working for your own benefit and being without greed, hatred, stupidity, and a view of self, you may attain purity that is enlightenment. Some people hear one enlightened thought, you are a Buddha. And they say, everyone is a Buddha, right? All living beings are Buddhas, but they must first wake up to it. To say, everyone is a Buddha when you are not enlightened is to be like the common person mentioned earlier in the sutra who called himself the king. The real king would throw that man in prison. Heaven cannot hold two sons. The citizens cannot serve two kings. Why don't you cultivate your own mind? Get rid of the defilement, and then you can see your nature as it truly is. See it right now. 
Do not say, wait a minute, wait a minute. See it immediately. If you see your nature, you realize Buddhahood. If I see my nature, I realize Buddhahood. If someone else sees his nature, he realizes Buddhahood. There is no inequality here. This principle is completely democratic. Whoever sees his nature realizes Buddhahood. You need not wait, see it through it, and suddenly you don't know how you are enlightened, strange and unexpectedly wonderful. You return to yourself and regain your original mind. Sutra, good knowing advisors. When I was with the High Master Chen, I was enlightened as soon as I heard these words and suddenly saw the true suchness of my own original nature. That is why I am spreading this method of teaching which leads students of the way to become enlightened. Suddenly, to body as each contemplates his own mind and sees his own original nature. Commentary All of you of great knowledge Hear me, said the sixth patriarch. I have explained so much drama to you. Have you become enlightened yet? When I was with the High Master Chen, the fifth patriarch, I awoke as soon as I heard him speak. I, the sixth patriarch, an illiterate barbarian, a stupid country person, met the High Master Chen. The master did not say the fifth patriarch's full name but merely said Chen as a gesture of respect. The High Master Chen, he said, endured the temple of many. Those below him tried to pressure him to transmitting, into transmitting the drama to Shen Xiao. The fifth patriarch was not even free to transmit the drama, but was forced to endure the tyranny of his own disciples. His name, Chen, means to endure. He endured practicing the perfection of patience until one day the barbarian arrived. I will give the Dharma to the barbarian. The free patriarch thought and forget about all of you. Do you think you can bully a patriarch? I will transmit the Dharma to someone who can't even read. What else is your education now? First, the high master Chen ceased enduring and transmitted the Dharma to the sixth patriarch. The sixth patriarch was a friend to who understood. Hi, master, he said, you have suffered greatly. Then he told the assembly, I was enlightened as soon as I heard his words. Why did the fifth patriarch transmit the drama to this barbarian? It was not just because he wanted to defy Shen Xiao. Rather, it was because this barbarian was so intelligent that as soon as he heard the fifth patriarch speak, he said in reply, so that's how it is. My self-nature is originally pure. My self-nature is originally bright and light. My self-nature is originally unmoving. How wonderful it is. Yes, said the fifth patriarch. You're right. It's just that way. The sixth patriarch told the assembly, I propagate this sudden teaching in order to cause all students of the way to become enlightened suddenly to their own mind and see their own nature. Sutra, if you are unable to enlighten yourself, you must seek out a great good knowing advisor, who, one who understands the drama of the most superior vehicle and will direct you to the right road. Such a good knowing advisor possesses great karmic conditions, which is to say that he will transform you and guide you and lead you to see your nature. It is because of the good knowing advisor that all wholesome dramas can arise. All the Buddhas of the three Buddhas of Tam and the twelve divisions of Sutra texts as well exist within the nature of people, originally complete within them. If you are unable to enlighten yourself, you should seek out the instruction of a good knowing advisor who will lead you to see your nature. Commentary If you can't enlighten yourself, you must seek out a bright eyed knowing one, one who has gone through, wishing to travel the mountain tracks, ask someone who has taken the trip, ask him, Where does this road lead? 
if you do not ask someone who has traveled the road before, but instead ask a blind man for directions, the blind man will say, "Just keep walking. Go wherever wherever you wish." If you ask the blind man, "Is this emptiness?" He will say, "It certainly is. No one can hinder you here." But is it really emptiness? The great, good, knowing advisor understands the drama of a superior vehicle and directs you to the right road. If there is a great affinity between you, you may meet a bright-eyed, knowing one who will teach you to understand your mind and see your nature. All good dramas arise because of him. Your good rules flourish because he watches over their growth. He explains the drama to you every day and causes your good rules to grow. All the Buddhas of the past, present, and future, and the twelve divisions of sutra taste, are originally complete within your own nature. But if you cannot understand that, you should seek out the instruction of a good knowing advisor. He will teach you to behold the pure and wonderful substance of your self nature. Sutra. If you are one who enlightens himself, you need not seek a teacher outside. If you insist that it is necessary to seek a good knowing advisor in the hope of obtaining liberation, you are mistaken. Why? Within your own mind, there is self enlightenment, which is a knowing advisor. But if you give rise to devious confusion, false thoughts, and perversions, Also, a good knowing advisor external to you instructs you that he cannot save you. Commentary: If you seek outside yourself, he will not obtain it. You must enlighten yourself by recognizing the prana of your self nature. Your true good knowing advisor is within your self nature. He is simply your own wisdom. Devin means not right. Confusion means lack of understanding. Not understanding what, not understanding what is right. For example, people have certain fondnesses. Some have devious confusion of sex. You should not regard these confusions as unimportant. For when you do, your confusion deepens, and the small confusions become large ones. Thinking the large confusions to be unimportant, you arrive at old age with old confusions and go to your death with death confusions. Even at the time of death, you are confused and unclear. How pitiful! False thoughts are untrue thoughts. They are in vain. They are vain and unreal. Perversions occur when you clearly know that something is wrong, but do it anyway. You understand perfectly well that it is not right, but you say it is right. It is right. If you continue to do things contrary to drama, you are perverted. You are perverted when you not only do these things yourself, but influence others to do them as well. To discuss this thoroughly would take a long time. To have success, students of the Buddha Dharma must not be perverted. If you have devious confusion, false thoughts, and perversions, although a good knowing advisor external to you, such as your good teacher or good friend, instructs you, he cannot save you. Your good teacher and worthy friend may try to help you, but if you refuse to obey him, he can do no more. Your good knowing advisor is not a policeman. If you break his laws, he cannot put you in jail. He can only hope that you will gradually change your forms. If living beings obey, the master is certainly pleased. But if they do not, also he cannot get angry. He is unhappy in his heart because he has no way to help them. So try. If you give rise to genuine prana contemplation and illumination, in the space of an instant, all false thoughts are extinguished. If you recognize your self nature in a single moment of enlightenment, you will arrive at the stage of a Buddha. Commentary: Genuine means not devious and confused. Prana is genuine wisdom. To contemplate and illuminate is to slice off devious confusion, false thought, and upside down actions with a sort of wisdom. 
If you do not swing the wisdom sword and cut through your devil confusion, your false thinking and your upside down actions, you are deluded, lack of wisdom, and do upside down things. Recognize your original nature, understand it once, and in that one moment of enlightenment, you will go to the Buddha realm. On the other hand, where do you go in one moment of confusion to get God's realm, enlightened, a Buddha, confused, a living being? In the space of an instant of false thoughts are extinguished, destroyed by your wisdom sword like ice melted by the sun. Sutra, good knowing advisor, when you contemplate and illuminate with the wisdom which brightly penetrates within and without, you recognize your original mind. The recognition of your original mind is the original liberation. The attainment of liberation is the prana samadhi, is no thought. Commentary, using your inherent wisdom, observe inwardly the mind and body and outwardly the world. Completely understand both as you would look through a pane of glass from the outside seeing in and from the inside seeing out. Inwardly there is no body and mind and outwardly there is no world. But although there is no body, no mind, no world, the body and mind are the world function in accord with another, with one another. Although they function together, they are not attached to one another. This is called recognizing your own original mind. The original self nature, the true mind, clearly penetrates within and without. The recognition of your original mind is liberation. When you are not attached to sense objects or false thought, you obtain liberation. This is the prana samadhi of your self nature and is simply no thought. I previously spoke about non recollection, no thought, no false, no non falseness, non and non falseness, non recollection is morality, no thought is samadhi, and non falseness, i.e., being without false thought, is wisdom. When morality, samadhi, and wisdom all manifest, greed, hatred, and delusion disappear. Sutra. What is meant by no thought? No thought means to view all dharmas with a mind undefined by attachment. The function pervades all places but is nowhere attached. Merely purify your original mind and cause the six consciousnesses to go out the six gates to be undefined and unmixed among the six objects, to come and go freely and to penetrate without obstruction. That is the prana samadhi and freedom and liberation, and it is called the practice of no thought. Commentary, no thought means to view all dharmas with the mind undefined by attachment. When the mind is undefined by attachment, dharmas are empty. If dharmas are empty, then why must you get attached to your bad habits and weaknesses? Someone hears this and wants to try to become unattached to dramas by ignoring his phones. He may be unattached to dramas, but he can't get rid of his phones. How can this be called undefined by attachment? Since to be undefined by attachment, there must be no dramas. There must even more emphatically be no phones. The Dharma Sutra says, even dramas must be forsaken, so non dharmas must be forsaken even more. If you do not put down your bad habits and your faults, what kind of Buddha Dharma do you study? Your, I ask you, you are nothing but a fraud to treat himself and treat others. Students of the Dharma must definitely give up their faults if you cannot. Even though you may be able to explain a few sentences of drama, you are utterly useless. You are at the height of delusion. Prana Samadhi pervades all places and illuminates all places, but is nowhere attached. It is just like empty space. Merely purify your original mind so that it is undefined and unattached and cause the six consciousnesses visual auditory, olfactory, gustatory, tactile mental awareness 
to go out to six gates, eye, ear, nose, tongue, body and mind, and from among the six objects, forms, sounds, smells, tastes, attributes, and objects of mind. But to be undefined and untainted, to come and go freely, and to penetrate without obstruction. If you examine this conglomeration, you will see that the six organs and six objects ordinarily unite to form a corporation. Where there is a corporation, there is defilement and mixing. Do not incorporate. They should freely come and go. The eyes hear forms outside. Inside, there is nothing. The ears hear sounds outside, but the mind does not know. What does this mean? Do you don't understand? Then study the Buddha Dharma diligently. At the time of unobstructed penetration, the 10,000 changes and the 10,000 transformations of the correct ills are unhindered, unblocked, and inexhaustible. That is, Prana Samadhi and freedom and liberation, and it is called the practice of no thought. Sutra, not thinking of the, the hundred things and constantly causing your thought to be cut off is called Dharma bondage and is an extremist view. Commentary, if you see it saying, I'm sitting here, not thinking of anything, I'm thinking of nothing. And in this way, try to cut off your thought. You still have not cut off the thought of not thinking of anything. If you do this, you will be tied up in the dramas and will not obtain release. Thought, no thought, falling into either two of the two extremes is not the middle way. In telling you to awaken to the no thought drama, it is not to say that you should be like dead ashes or rotten wood. What use are ashes without fire? They are nothing but dirt. What use is rotten wood? You can't burn it. If you sit thinking, do not think, do not think of the hundred things. Your thought of not thinking is itself a thought. Trying not to think is like trying to prevent the grass from growing by pounding it on a uh, pounding on it with a rock and shouting, "Don't come up!" You push the rock into the soil, but when you move it again, the grass grows up thicker, stronger, and more dense than ever. Then, how does one attain to the no thought drama? It requires the samadhi power that comes from having right, not having thought. So, try good knowing advisors, one who awakens to the no thought drama, completely penetrates the ten thousand dramas. One who awakens to the no thought drama sees all Buddha realms. One who awakens to the no thought drama arrives at the Buddha position. Commentary: Do you know the realms of all Buddhas? Do you know what their state is like? If you do, and you understand the no thought drama, no, you say, I do not understand the Buddha realms. Then you do not understand the no thought drama. Do not be like a certain person who does not know anything at all, who cannot even explain the five esoteric meanings and the seven sutra title topics, but who still runs around lecturing on sutras and cheating those who do not understand the Buddha drama. People stream in like ants to hear him. They come marching, dun dun dun. What for? Who knows? Ultimately, what Buddha drama do they study? That man reads an English translation of a sutra aloud. He simply reads it. Anybody can read it. You can read it. He can read it. I couldn't read it. Why? Because I can't read English. To explain sutras, one must explain every sentence and every word, every paragraph and every chapter. You say he doesn't do it that way. Of course he doesn't. He doesn't know how to. So how could he? Don't match off with the, the ants. If you enlighten the drama of no thought, you go to the Buddha position. And now isn't that important? When I, I explain sutras, people come to hear, not ants. The people are few, but they come to study the drama, not to eat honey like ants. Here we gather to eat bitterness. We don't come to eat candy. 
Sutra. Good knowing advisors, those of future generations who obtain my dharma, should take up this sudden teaching dharma door, and with those of like views and like practice, they should vow to receive and uphold it as if serving the Buddhas. To the end of their lives, they should not retreat, and they will certainly enter the holy position. In this way, it should be transmitted from generation to generation. It is silently transmitted. Do not hide away the orthodox dharma, and do not transmit it to those of different views and different practice who believe in other teachings, since it will harm them and ultimately be of no benefit. Commentary: All of you good knowing advisers, continued the sixth patriarch. The dharma was transmitted from Shakyamuni Buddha to Mahakashyapa to Ananda, and so forth. To Bodhidharma and then to the second patriarch, the third patriarch, reaching to me, the sixth patriarch. You should transmit the mighty seal of Dharma door in just that way from generation to generation. Do not hide the orthodox Dharma and transmit the even Dharma instead. Why was the great master a patriarch? Because he never slighted the lowly. When he was at Huang Mei, everyone looked down on him because he was an illiterate country person. He knew the pain of enduring ridicule himself, and so he did not slight others. He addressed everyone as good knowing advisers, whether they were or not. You should not transmit this mind seal to those of different views and practice, he said. Why? 